I'm super bullish, man, on crypto, like beyond bullish. I mean, if this, if crypto doesn't keep going up for a whole year or two years, it's because fucking, they just, like, the government just got together and they bombard us and they just, whatever they did, you know, just to scare the shit out of us or World War Three or another fucking COVID, not even, not even another COVID. Look what COVID did. We got, we jumped into a bull run during COVID, you know? So, yeah, and I, I think there's, it's not just the uh, institutions, man. There's, I think there's individuals, like, people are investing. It's not just institutions, you know, but, but, uh, and it's, it hasn't even started yet, man. It hasn't even started yet, you know? This shit hasn't even started. I, I think the, I always thought that XRP will start the party. Well, I mean, Bitcoin will start it, but XRP will be like the, like the, okay, we are in a bull run, you know? If XRP will hit like a dollar fifty in the next few weeks, you know? Uh, $2, but, um, but yeah, I actually invested today more on Ethereum. Uh, I was going to buy more Bitcoin, but I, I, I went with Ethereum just because of the ETFs, you know? And, uh, I think Ethereum could, I think Ethereum could easily hit 16 grand, man, in this bull run, even more, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah I, man, I, that's, that's, that's my take on the economy. I think the economy is it. strong as fuck. I think the yeah. economy is really strong, man. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking about credit card debt there. I just want to say, you know, um, I don't think that's the major issue with that in this country. I think the major issue is that we're in tons of debt, trillions of dollars of debt to other countries. So I think, like, personal debt is a whole separate issue from national debt, which is a very, right. very big problem, which causes inflation. Secondly, you know, I, I've worked for Chase Bank collecting on credit cards, high value, high dollar credit cards. What I can tell you is that settling is a very typical thing, but there's a very, very, very big difference between settling in full and getting a pay to balance in full. So there's what's called a biff and a sif. If you settle an account, no bank will ever lend to you again. So if I go and I open a credit card for 20 grand and I settle it for eight, that's great. It's going to show settled in full on my account. And I'm going to think, oh my God, I got a discount. Yeah. And in reality, it yeah. doesn't matter because you're never going to be yeah. able to get a loan again. Yeah. Now, and, and, and if you pay in full, you got to make sure they send you the letter paid to Hold on. Mar, Mar, right? Mar. Let him yeah. finish. Let him finish. Yeah. So, um, in addition, when you go and you do that, that, you know, hurts your credit extremely bad. And it, it, it doesn't repair in two years. Now, you can try to use these debt consolidation companies. But when I worked for Chase, we weren't even allowed to work with them. Uh, simply because they cannot act on behalf of somebody else unless you're the actual uh, power of attorney for somebody. So we couldn't even speak to them because the first thing we have to do is verify social security number and birth date. And if a lot of times what would end up happening is these debt consolidation companies would call in and try to impersonate the people that they were representing, which is a very, very, very fraudulent thing that these companies try to do. Now, these letters that they say they can send and get all this stuff off, these are things that we see on Facebook and we see on TikTok, these guys that say, oh, we can fix your credit and da 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 It's honestly, it's, it's BS. Um, people might not care as much about credit card debt, but I don't think it's because uh, of any other reason than they physically don't have the money to pay it right now. If you talk to most Americans today versus even, in the, even during COVID, they're much poorer today than they were then. And that's because cost of living is going through the roof. The amount of food debt, or the amount of food that we're paying is going through the roof. Gas is going up. Everything that's you know a traditional uh, staple is going up. And what that means for us is is a scary future here with our economy. And that's why cryptocurrency is propping up the other side of our economy right now. But there is a lot of great American companies that are making a lot of money during this. Now, what I would say is that when you try to fix your your debt you're right the only two things that you can't file bankruptcy on or generally you won't get a settlement on are student loans and the irs but even the irs will work with you if you owe the irs a lot of money and you're willing to pay them off at once they will and that's one debt that you can pay off and if you do get a settlement it's not going to negatively affect your credit because 
when you pay back a private institution, if you don't pay back every dollar that you owe them, then they will never give you that balance in full, which let's see, say you have three negative credit cards and you pay one off in full, the other one off in full, but the third one you settle. Even though you paid those two off in full, that third one, if you settle it, no bank will ever give you a loan because as soon as you go to them, I don't want to say ever, but it will take you a very long time because when you go to them, they're going to say, why would I give you money if you're just going to you know, walk off with it, not pay me, and then I have to settle with you for less than what you actually owe. So it's, it, it is a very murky area, and I'll just say that you know the banks definitely profit in that because when they charge off your card, they're hitting you with tons of fees, tons of you know, uh, interest and typically most credit cards, if you have good credit are between five and 12%, uh, for, you know, your, your, uh, your interest rate. And then if you miss payments or if you're behind, it goes up to 24%, which is, uh, the limit now, I believe is 24.99. It used to be 28 or 32%. So yeah, I mean, credit card debt, I, I think in personal debt in America, is something that's an issue, but I think national debt is the, the bigger issue, in right. my opinion. No, uh, and, uh, you know, talking about credit, uh, if I owe, let's say I owe the credit, I'm, uh, let's say I owe the credit card, you know, it's in my credit report, and I owe $1,000, and I call the company to settle with them, and I uh, ended up selling them, settling for $600, uh, yeah, it's it's it shows us you know it's, it was paid outstanding, but it still shows negative on my credit report, right? But if I decide to pay the whole one thousand dollars, and you want it out of your credit report, you will you will tell them, hey, I want it out of my credit report. But before I pay you the one the total amount, the one thousand dollars, I want you to send me a letter guaranteeing me that you're gonna delete it out of my credit report. Normally, they still don't do it, and then you get that letter, and you send it to TransUnion, uh, Equal You Pass. have 90 days. They have 90 days, right. but they have to automatically do it. Right. And uh, I've seen some people, like, getting impatient, and they didn't do it, and they'll send the letters to Equifax and all that, and they do it on their own. That's another way. I've seen people pay it off completely, and they don't ask, and they thought that it would be taken off, and they, they don't do it. Um, I know that it takes seven years, man, but I'm going to tell you something. People are getting their shit out of the credit report. They are, bro. It's fucking happening, bro. And it's a real thing. It's a real thing, bro. They're getting the shit out. And the banks, I don't know if the banks have a way of knowing that you owe money. But once that shit is out of your credit report, the banks don't know shit, bro. You might owe like $300,000, even a million dollars. And you might be paying five bucks for every account. But it's out of your credit report, and you have an 800 score. In fact, people are pumping credit, your credit score. They have ways to pump it. They have ways. People are, let's say you want to take out a Porsche. But you can because you got your 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 work, you know, your car, and your wife has a car too. You have a car under your wife. People are getting those cars out of your report. You buy that porch, and then they'll put those cars back into your report. That's how fucked up it is the system is already, man, and that credit shit. And the government knows it, and that's why they don't even give a damn anymore that much about it anymore. The Spirian, Equifax, TransUnion, that is garbage already. They're going to have to come up with a new system, bro. Because I know individuals that own like three, four hundred thousand dollars, they never pay for it, and six months later their credit score was eight hundred. <laughs> and they're at it again. I don't know anybody that can get a credit score of eight hundred in six yeah. months. But I definitely want to get to the overall crypto market though. Okay. That uh, obviously we know Bitcoin did set another all time high today <clears throat> earlier in the morning. And then obviously did get pretty back, uh, pretty close to it again this afternoon. It is currently sitting down 0.44%. No, up. Looking at the wrong. I'm looking at the one hour, not the 24 hours. Sorry. It is currently up just below 2%, 1.92% over the last 24 hours. It is, has a price of $72,790.91. A market cap of. 
1.43 trillion. Obviously, it is the f man. We already know the story with Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, lots of excitement still. Obviously, lots of money still coming into the ETFs. Obviously, pumping pumping the market in the right direction. Um, like I said, I kind of I'm thinking that here very shortly. You know, my next my next leg up, like I talked about on Sunday, uh, when I before this even happened was was 80k. I mean, that's roughly about what between eight and ten percent from right from where we're at right now, uh, which we know Bitcoin can do, and and you know, 24 to 48 hours if it really really needs to, uh, especially with the type of money that's coming into the space. Uh, Ethereum, Ethereum is down 0.29% over the last 24 hours. Kind of cooled off a little bit over the, today. Uh, still sitting at a nice price, three thousand nine hundred seventy-three dollars and seven cents. Market cap of four hundred and seventy-seven billion dollars. We also got BNB. BNB is having a massive day. It did hit over six hundred dollars y'all it is definitely on its way to another all-time high just like ETH I mean ETH is you know less than 20% from an all-time as high as well uh BNB is up 16.30% over the last 24 hours a price of $619.23 a market cap of over 92 billion Solana Having a great day as well, too. Up 11.36% over the last 24 hours. A price of 166.32 and a market cap of 73 plus billion dollars. We also got to our number one meme coin right now in the space, Dogecoin. It is down almost 1% over the last 24 hours. A price of 16.68. It's a little over 16 and a half cents. In a market capitalization of over 23 billion, just below 24 billion, <laughs> we got Shiba is down a little over one and a half percent over the last 24 hours. A price of four zeros three one four nine in an 18 and a half billion dollar market cap. We also have Polygon. Polygon, hey, we're gonna talk about this one. Really. Up seven percent over the last 24 hours at a dollar 26. And a twelve and a half billion dollar market cap as well. Let's see what else we could go to. What else do we like today? H bar is one about the yeah, H bar is one that we've been talking about. It is it is down a little over three percent over the last twenty four hours. Uh, That's good utility. Though. Current price a little over thirteen cents, thirteen twenty two, and a four point four billion dollar market cap. Definitely one of my favorite. Uh, coins out there right now. Render is another one. Uh, it's down just under two percent over the last twenty-four hours. Price of eleven twenty-nine and a four point, just under a four point three billion dollar market cap. Then we get to Pepe. Pepe is up nine point two seven percent over the last twenty-four hours. After a few days of being kind of on ice, nice to see that is up and moving. It has. A price of five zeros eight 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 five and a three point seven billion dollar market cap. Next is one that I did move into right before its nice run up uh, is Whiff, which is the big the big boy on the Solana block now. Uh, it is up twenty six point three eight percent. So obviously, I just moved a very little bit of money. I, I kind of started this joke. Uh, with this, with uh, with my uh, Phantom wallet, like literally a very, 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 very tight amount of money, and I was testing myself to see if I could really take a very small part of money and make it into a lot of money over this bull cycle. And actually, I've so far in the first week, I've doubled it. And I'll be honest with you, I just put in this one Phantom wallet, I put ten dollars of, of of Solana, and. I want to see how far I can take ten dollars of Solana this bull cycle and what I can do with it. Currently, it's sitting at. Let me look at it. What I got so ten dollars when I started, and right now today, 
I'm up over twenty four dollars. So hey, fourteen plus dollars in the first you know few days. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. So as long as Solana keeps giving me some opportunities with some current big memes as well as obviously some up and coming ones I might take a chance on too. I'm gonna see if I can take ten dollars and turn it into a hundred dollars. And then a hundred into a thousand, a thousand and ten thousand, ten thousand to a hundred thousand. We'll just keep working ourselves all the way up. It's kind of just a nice little challenge. Uh, something I wanted to do since I am just like I said, I'm I haven't really been on uh, the Solana chain, uh, but obviously now I'm just playing around with it. And if I can really do something that crazy, uh, then I don't know what, what I'm going to do with myself anymore. Uh, but Floki, Floki is down just under 1% over the last 24 hours, 0.95%, coming in at a price of 3.02636 and a market capitalization of 2.5 billion, y'all, 2.5 billion dollars for Floki. We also have Bonk coming in next. Uh, also having an, a decent day. Up 13.56% over the last 24 hours. Just literally dropped. It was at 14 and a half. Literally just dropped 1% right that, that quick. Uh, a price of four zeros three two five nine and a mark cap of a little over $2.1 billion, y'all. And then we get to another one I, I, I truly do like. It is down 5.55% over the last 24 hours. Is WorldCoin. Uh, I definitely like the utility over there. I think it I think it can have a, a decent future, obviously, since Elon has started this lawsuit. It's kind of been, you know, going a little bit back and forth. It is at $9.52. Market cap of $1.4 billion. Uh, Jupiter. Jupiter did break back into the top 100 as well, y'all. Jupiter, obviously, we you know the story about Jupiter did did some amazing things. Obviously, I think it started with like a billion dollar market cap, if I remember, uh, if I remember right. Up almost 15 percent over the last 24 hours. A price of 93 cents, three three, uh, and a market cap of 1.2 plus billion dollars. And then we got Pancake. Swap broke into the top 100 as well to wrap it up. Uh, up a little over 18% over the last 24 hours, $4.95 for a price, and just slightly over a $1.2 billion market cap. Obviously, that's Bitcoin, Ethereum, and also our top alts and memes out of the top 100. But if we go over to some of our favorite, and I mean our favorite alts and memes, highly represented in here. Dog coin <clears throat> is down 5.14% over the last 24 hours, coming in at a price of 308985, market cap $836,000. Market cap, Cider Realty, which is part of the STC ecosystem, is up 1.80% over the last 24 hours, a price of 301391. And a market cap of six point three eight million dollars. Pepe community. Shout out to D Tech and my brother Rage. Always, always appreciate the support, y'all. And big shout out to you guys as well. Um, I think we got Bubba, Bubba Gumps in the building too from Pepe community as well. Uh, it is up a little over nine percent over the last twenty four hours. A price of two zeros three two zero zero, and a market cap of two point five nine million dollars. <throat> uh, another one I've I've been staying looking at, and we might be able to get the team uh, on the space uh, for everybody. I am working out; they are extremely busy, but I'm hoping I'm hoping we can get them up here uh, to talk about. None other than K9 Finance Dow. Uh, it is down again. Yesterday had a, a, a pretty big down day. Today it's down 16.83 percent. Price three zeros two one three six and a market cap of 16.24 million. Uh, but this, to me, I'm not really worried about. To me, this is a this one has uh, a nice a nice long term hold in my opinion. Uh, and then obviously STC STC. 
is up 9.53% over the last 24 hours. Price of 201193 and a market cap of $11.9 million. As we know, obviously, we are getting closer and closer to the launch of Block Chain Zero as Cyta Chain, uh, I, which I think is due to launch this month on the main net. I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure that's what I what I heard. Can I get some thumbs up from the STC community if if uh, if Cyta Chain main net is this month? Joey Anton. I'm seeing if I'm hitting some, see if I can get some thumbs up. Or maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was March. Oh, no, but I see but, thumbs up. I see thumbs up. Okay. We're no Wilco. We're getting Wilco. Yeah, no. Uh, we also got Bitcoin. Bitcoin is down 0.67% over the last 24 hours. Price of... Five zero six five six two market cap five point eight two million dollars and of course the most vaulted crypto on the blockchain and of course obviously gotta give a shout out to Vitoshi for giving us a follow over here at the Crypto Alliance. Up three and a half percent almost over the last 24 hours. Price six zeros eight three four three, and it did recover its 50 million dollar mark cap, sitting at a mark cap of 50.68 million dollars. And I do want to obviously mention this one. They did come in here. Uh, or no, hold on, I got one more before this one. What am I doing? Cospa. I don't know what I'm doing from my computer, that's why. So bear with me, y'all. That's why. I'm used to doing it from my phone. And it's all saved, but this one I didn't have saved. Squid. Grow, as we know. Squid Grow. Uh, obviously, the creator, the founder, is the legendary Shibtoshi. Uh, this one is up a little over five and a half percent over the last 24 hours. It does. It did just have a nice, 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 nice run up, and it came down a little bit, but recovering nicely. Uh, seven zeros, two one four eight for a price and a market cap of twenty point one eight billion dollars. A lot of marketing going on. They do have a. They are uh, going to have some speakers up at the NFC or New York. NFT event, which is huge. Uh, so obviously, they're doing some mass marketing on that. And then I do want to cover tonight. Obviously, they did come in here the other night and, and showed some support and love. So just wanted to mention Jesus Coin. If you guys haven't heard of this one, uh, <laughs> it is down 4.77% over the last 24 hours. A price of 602078 it does have a market cap of 31.47 million, but this thing did run up at one time to a 160 plus billion dollar market cap before coming back down. Uh, but I think, I think it has a lot of potential. It has a very strong community. Uh, so obviously, just wanted to pay some respect to them for obviously coming in here the other night. Uh, I do feel safe mentioning this one. Uh, but like I said, shout out to shout out to the Jesus Q, uh, Coin community uh, for coming in here and showing us some support and, and and everything. So other than that, like I said, if you always make sure if you haven't hit that hit that uh, retweet for us on the space. Obviously, we'd love to get as many people in here as possible. Also, you guys know me; your network is your net worth. So make sure you are hitting that follow button for anybody and everybody that is in the space y'all because you never know who you could meet in these spaces and how the information you could come across from that individual could change the trajectory of your journey into crypto but obviously i appreciate all the retweets anton and you guys definitely appreciate the retweets side chain green 
or Gree 3 3 I appreciate the likes and the retweets. CRX Otan, I would appreciate appreciate it. Uh, as always, if anybody ever wants to come up in here and join us, definitely, definitely feel free to do so, y'all. Uh, it just keeps the conversations uh, flowing and rolling. Uh, like I said earlier, this space will be a little bit shorter than usual just for the simple fact that, you know, Killswitch had his 3 o'clock clock space. Uh, so I told him on Wednesdays we'll, we'll start to keep the, the night space a little shorter than usual. So I know I, I, I love y'all. I love spending time with y'all. I love talking crypto. I love talking memes, Bitcoin, Ethereum, alts. Uh, but obviously, uh, I do want to, to make sure that I respect everybody's time as well, even myself and Killswitches. Uh, also pinned above. Uh, I still do have the pen, the pen tweet that's on my, uh, on my profile. Uh, it is a longer one. Uh, it's been up there for a while. If y'all did hit that like button and the retweet, I do appreciate y'all. Uh, obviously, as we continue to continue to move forward, we have a lot, a lot of big things and great things that we are working on and that we are going to be doing. Uh, like I discussed. Uh, the other night, um, tomorrow we got a meeting with the PR firm. Uh, we definitely, definitely want to start getting publications out there. You know, in the typical Bloomberg, Yahoo Finance, Market Watch, LA, New York, uh, Weekly Times, uh, maybe looking into uh, a few others. Obviously, try to hit some, some, some different online correspondence as well. Uh, Whatever kind of hopefully whatever kind of package he can he can put together for me, uh, that doesn't break doesn't break the bank for me. Uh, also, we're we're reaching out to potential content creators, influencers, maybe about getting giving them some sponsorships. Uh, we really are going to start moving to take the crypto alliance to the next level, y'all. As y'all know, this we want this to be a powerhouse in the crypto industry as well a a household name uh there's lots of great things that we're doing here and it's because of every single one of us not just one individual all of us collectively uh and i just think this space is is obviously making headway and it's because of all the individual work that adds up to all of us but i want to say obviously thank you uh as well as obviously we have some traveling coming up washington dc to meet up with some of the pro crypto congressional leaders uh, from different caucuses and committees and everything uh, local, we've been we've been doing that for for, for quite some time now. Uh, also, potential down in Texas with another individual that's pro crypto. Uh, we're 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 never we're not going to leave any stones unturned. Uh, we want to to take this what we're building over here uh, above and beyond. Because at the end of the day, all of us benefit after all, uh, you know. And we've talked about this many times. Like, what better we we can come here? We are a, a crypto family. We're a crypto network. We're a crypto community. We are the community of communities, uh, and we're coming here together. Uh, you know, some of us have different thoughts, different opinions, different beliefs different backgrounds that's not what matters uh, we're all in here in, in crypto and we're all in this together uh, so definitely take a look at that tweet obviously any and all donations will be allocated directly to the crypto alliance and the growth and advancement of it obviously not mandatory we will still love you more than anything no matter what but anything would be appreciated for the overall growth of what we are working towards uh, currently, I do have it set up on the top of the Crypto Alliance, my uh, X account. That's the only place, so if, don't fall for any type of scams or anything. I would never DM you directly asking you for anything. Uh, it's all anonymous donation. Obviously, there's a Bitcoin and Ethereum address. As well, It you can send ERC20 tokens to the ETH address as well. And then the newest update for, for us. Uh, today, I did get the official Reddit account created and up for the Crypto Alliance, as well as got the first official uh, post up on Reddit as well. So that is pinned up above. Uh, if you want to go take a look at it, you know, give it a retweet, 
tweet, give it a like, drop a comment if you like. Otherwise, go over there, check it out on Reddit. If you do have Reddit, it's not Reddit, something you use, you have an account, definitely give us a follow and give us an upvote. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Like I said, we, we're, we're, we're trying to make as many moves as we can to make sure we're we're not leaving no on stone, stone on turn, making sure that we're going to be able to connect with as many individuals in the crypto space as possible. Uh, that's why, obviously, like I said, today got the official Reddit account. Last week, we got the Telegram finally up. Uh, we got the TikTok uh, channel up. does have a couple of short videos on it. We also got the Instagram that I'm getting up as well. Uh, we got the X community uh, as well if you want to join that. As well as obviously, we I have the the Crypto Alliance uh, X chat group. If you want to get into that, just DM me. I can send you. I can add you to that as well. Uh, we're just really trying to create as many many possibilities for us to continue to connect, continue to build uh, the relationships amongst each other, amongst communities, uh, as well as network, and continue to keep the conversations going, the information flowing, because that is what is important, y'all. Uh, so, like I said, a couple of new, one that's been around for a few days, tweet, obviously, that's pinned onto my profile, it's a longer one, so definitely check out, read it, and then obviously, the new announcement of having the official Reddit account uh, up and rolling, and we will start to make sure we're posting on all these different platforms. Eventually, I'm going to have to probably hire somebody to to take care of, uh, of, of all the social medias, except X, I will always do X, uh, because I think it's going to become... Uh, I think we're going to continue to grow and get bigger and bigger. And eventually, it's going to probably be more than I can handle by myself. Uh, so, But we'll have to obviously face that when we get there. But again, thank you to everyone. You know, I definitely appreciate the support. Coming into these spaces, liking tweets, retweeting tweets, commenting on tweets. Uh, and I'm always here to, we know that we're always here to give that support back. I'm always trying to comment on people's tweets. Uh, from different communities, different projects, retweet, like, anything and everything I can do, as well as, obviously, my DMs are always open, whether you DM me here on X, or if you want to reach out to me on Telegram, that link is in my bio as well, so definitely, definitely feel free, 24-7, 365, go ahead, you can message me, I am going, I will get back to you, uh, it might not be necessary that second, if I have my phone in my hand, I see it pop up, Yes, I will, uh, but no matter what, I will get back to you because one thing I do is make sure uh, I make my I make sure I'm available for anybody and everybody in the space that that wants to has a question or you know wants to have a conversation. Uh, that's what's important to me as well as continuing to to build relationships with with every individual that I can in the space. Everybody that's here, uh, but you know, obviously, there's a lot of great things happening in the space when it comes to. You know, setting new all-time highs and, and, and liquidity coming in from big-time institutions. Uh, but the biggest thing is what we're doing here, right here, every single night. Coming together, having these conversations, sharing knowledge, sharing information, sharing insights, sharing opinions. Uh, as well as, obviously, sharing news, updates, you know, facts. Uh, this is what I consider, and you guys have heard me say it many times. This is education from the source. You know, what better place to come and learn than the people that are in this space 24-7, 365, that live a crypto lifestyle, that are here and committed and dedicated uh, to having success in this space. Uh, you know, everybody has maybe different numbers, uh, but all of our goals are common. You know, they're, they're, they're similar in, in, in ways, uh, and that's why I always say it's, it's easier to work together, it increases your obviously your odds, your chances of being able to accomplish and achieve those financial goals you have set yourself, uh, and that's what a network is all for. You know, yes, the information that flows is priceless. That's great, but also, you know, don't be afraid to ask for for advice or ask for help. That's what I know I'm here for. I know that's what Kill Switch, Kill Switch is here for. I have no doubt in my mind that you could ask anybody in this space right now or anybody that comes into this space for advice or for some sort of help uh, with something that maybe you're working on or you don't you know, quite understand. Uh, and I guarantee that everybody will come to, to somebody's aid. 
you will definitely be able to find somebody in the Crypt Alliance, in this community. Uh, there's a lot of great individuals that make this up. Uh, and I couldn't be more happy or more proud of what we've been able to accomplish over here in a very short time. Uh, and like I've told you all, my promise is to continue to work, continue to build blood, sweat, tears. The dedication is there. I'm putting the hours in. I'm putting the money into it because I want this to succeed. I want this to succeed for all of us because the more success we have, the more success the Crypto Alliance has, the more sex I have, that means the greater success for every single one of us. And that's truly what it's about. It's about every single one of us, not about one individual. Obviously, we can achieve our individual goals, which can be done together, but it's still your individual goal that's getting accomplished. Uh, but there's a lot of other great things that we can do in the space as well. You know, there's a lot of smaller groups that are doing what we're doing. They've been doing this for a long time. Uh, and they keep it to themselves, kind of very, very tight knit, tight, small niche groups. Uh, and that's not what I want. I wanted us to be able to create that on a much larger scale, much larger level, uh, because there is plenty to go around in this space. Uh, and there's enough pieces of pie for every single one of us. Uh, and I truly believe that. And I know that, you know. What we could all ask for or want is probably a very, 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 very tiny fraction of what is available in this space and what will be made over this next bull cycle. Uh, so us continue to come together, to work, to network together uh, will give us many, many, many opportunities that we may have not had if we weren't here together in this space and doing what we're doing. Uh, and there's a lot of great things to come. You know, I've been working extremely hard on a few things. Uh, the contracts are signed now, so look forward to that. Some great opportunities. Always, always, like we say, at the end of the day, we're all growing. We all have to make our own decisions. We all should be doing our own, do, always do our own research and due diligence. Uh, but for me, and the way I move with individuals I know in the space, my network, uh, it's a lot easier for me to look into something and... and and take an opportunity into something when it's brought to me by somebody that's in my circle inside my network, a community member, somebody that I've seen around, somebody that I know, somebody I've had conversations with, uh, than just seeing some random tweet by some random account that that's promising the next greatest thing. Uh, nine times out of ten, I'm not going to even take a look at it. But if Tosca was to bring some to me, Jesse was to bring some to me, D-Tech, Mar, CRXO, Rello, Obioma, Stony Dev, Chris, D D D Generational Wealth, Antoine, Mario, Chief Greed, Crypto Biz, anybody, anybody in here, Rage, I'm definitely, definitely going to be a lot more keen, a lot more interested in it, like I said, than just seeing some random tweet. And a lot of times I know that the people in this space are are trying to look out for each other and and give people obviously opportunities uh and that's what it's all about within the network so i know i rambled on for long obviously our brother mutasco did come up here mutasco i hope that you you've been having a wonderful wednesday a middle of the week uh if you are done with your nightly routine you can join the conversation definitely definitely feel free to unmute yourself uh because we always know that you always have some great information and some some great things to share with us. Uh, and I do apologize for the long ramble. I'm sure everybody is sleeping now because of it. No, thanks for the space. Um, I wanted to add to what Killswitch um, said earlier. I think my I think it was a conversation about credit cards. I like to always go to the source. Um, and just at a high level, and this is just because I've also read the reports, so I'm just speaking based on reports, right? Um, statistically, if you look at the conversation, and I liked what Killswitch was talking about, because there's always some nuances to some of these problems. And, um, and you go from state to state, and it's completely different, different situation, different rules, different, all kinds of things. But if you look at it from a high level, a few things have changed, right, uh, since 2021. 
Um, and according to, this is the Fed. This is not some private company or some, this is from the Federal Reserve directly. Their own assessment of debt in the United States. And this is consumer debt, right? And if you look at it, there's like three baskets of it. If you take out real estate, you can say, well, credit card debt. That number we all know is like 1.1 trillion or something like that, right? It's been going up. And then you have another basket, which is car loans, right? 1.6 trillion. It's a twin to student loan because student loan is about the same amount, right? Here's what is interesting about these three buckets. Did I just say credit card debt, right? Here's the problem. It's like 3%. Yeah. And if you look at what's going on there, there's always two tales of the story, right? Uh, there's nearly two third of Americans, I think it's about 51 or something like that, close to 60. Uh, check me on those numbers. But I do know that the number on the bottom is about 49%. It's been going up. It was 39% from 2021. Um, so that means middle class, low income, um, you know, younger people, right? Again, now if you look up, let's say you, you just draw a pyramid in front of you. That's what I'm talking about. Middle class, low class, younger. And then you look up and there's this group of people that somehow they don't, they don't hold. And this is a, the Federal Reserve saying this. I'm not the one saying this, right? They don't hold money like credit. Like if they, they swipe their card, they don't go month to month, right? They pay it out. They pay it out. And why is that? Because that group and, and this is based on statistics also and based on what they have. Most of them largely own their homes outright. And if you look, ownership of homes gives you wealth, whatever it is, how it is. And then you go down another level, you're looking at them having to have stocks. They're invested in the equities market as well. They also have a reasonable amount of savings, okay? And what that savings does is the situation we're all in right now. So if you take the middle, low class, yeah, low, middle class, low income, younger people, you're being, you're being like squeezed from interest rates going up. That's number one. Number two, inflation is like, yeah, it's coming down, but people are literally bleeding, right? And the bleeding part is if you fall in that basket based on the Federal Reserve's own report, if, if inflation wasn't there, interest rate wasn't there, you're probably still struggling, okay? Uh, and the numbers show that even with that situation, if you take out inflation and interest rate, uh, they still go be, be beyond a month. On average, 90, 90 days, right? And, and then it goes into delinquency, and then the whole story starts to get messy. Now, if you look at that report alone, you have to know where you belong, right? And... I had Mars when, when you were talking because what, what came to my mind was it's it's very difficult to generalize it because if you take out the pocket that maybe why are they doing better than everyone else? Because maybe, like I said, they have stocks, they have whatever, they have other investments. They're also not sitting on like, you know, they have a home, but they're not sitting on a home that it's, it's all like on debt. So they're in a very good situation. And so if inflation is going to take a while to recover, they may be able to get through it, right? So the vacations and all the things they're doing, they can swipe the card. That could rack up this, the credit card total amount up, but that doesn't mean that they're struggling because they have something underneath that keeps them along the way. So if the Fed starts to cut rates, obviously it's going to affect interest rates on um, the, the, the credit cards and stuff. So they may get even better quicker than everyone else. Now, everyone else underneath, you have a big problem. And the solution is not to run away from it. Because when you run away from it, the whole problem compounds. Maybe you can be okay. But what if you have kids? Right? So it gets, it gets a little bit extended and it's not for everyone. Right? So it just depends on your situation. But I highly recommend if you, know, you want to educate yourself about what the situation is, and maybe trying to understand it better, doing that research will, will help you so that you're not like generalizing something that may not fit into your situation, right? It, it's state by state, individual by individual, 
whatever it is. Um, it's a whole big business out there, right? That people figure out some kind of ways to scheme people or give you some promise that is not realistic. Um, but we cannot forget why the problem is here today. Inflation, interest rates. If, if interest rates were down, we won't have to be talking about this. But this is still there. They're trying to cut it down. But most of the people that get hurt more are the ones I said, like if you're middle, low income, younger, you don't have any assets to offset, you don't have savings, yeah, you're going to have a problem. Um, and, and again, that's just my point of view. But the point of view is basically influenced by the report that I read and my understanding of what the scope of the problem is. It, it, it's not meant to be, oh yeah, this is what, what, what the situation is. Obviously, they also pick and choose what information they publish. But that gives me a high level view of what the problem is. Now, if I understand where the, the bulk of the problem is, maybe I have to recognize where I fall in that basket. And then I have to start to take different strategies on how to get out of it, right? Most people have different solutions. Ma, go ahead. Yeah, real quick about that, and then I'll jump into uh, some uh, big swing trades. Um, it takes 90 days, you're right, for private loans to go into your credit report. Um, that, that was the case also for credit cards. Credit cards, at least here where I'm from, Florida, are taking now from six months to a year to come up as a negative account on your credit report. Uh, they moved it up uh, uh, after COVID, but the reason the credit card companies are taking now longer to to put you on the credit report is because they they feel like once they you know they put that uh uh. They put it in the uh, credit report. That debt, once they put it in the credit report, the person cancel, kind of quits already. And they're like, I'm not going to pay you back. I'm already in the credit report. You know, I'll, I'll settle. So the credit card companies now are taking their sweet time into reporting you towards, uh, you know, into to Experian, TransUnion. Uh, I actually know an individual that uh, stopped paying his credit card 10 months ago, and he still hasn't even been reported yet. And it's a total of three credit cards, you know, because they're learning that once they report you, it's pretty much done. And once they sell the, the account, so they're taking even longer to selling that account to a, uh, you know, a third party, a company that's going to come in and, you know, and, and charge less. Uh, at least that's what's going on right now. Uh, it might change back to how it was before where like in 90 days, boom, that's it. You're, you're done. And, um. And they're all also working hard to uh, charge off. Charge off means that even if you pay the credit card off completely, the whole amount you, is still going to show as a charge off account on your credit report. And you cannot get that out for seven years, you know, unless they do what they're doing now here, that they got ways to get it out in like within months. I don't know how the world, I don't know how it's happening, but it's happening, you know. Back to not being able to hear anybody again. I think I think we're good. I think we all uh, went into a silent mode. My silent mode. I think I'm not sure. Right. Tultani, you here? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you could hear me. Um, yeah, and uh, but, uh, real quick about the swing trades. Uh, I'm getting very close. I, I jumped into a big swing trade with Jupiter on the on the correction around forty nine cents. I think I, I mentioned that uh, like a week and a half, two weeks ago when it was uh, when it was um, when Jupiter was out, you know, when it was launched. Uh, those are big money swing trades, you know. Uh, I'm also very looking for uh, for um, for Venom. Venom is going to be released on the eighteenth. The layer zero mainnet. I'm looking for a nice uh, correction there, and then jump into a big swing trade. 
both Venom and Jupiter. I'm going to take my initial investment and I'm going to keep the rest long term. I'm very close. My exit on Jupiter is on 99 cents. So I'm getting very close to that. You know, I like getting into big swing trades with big projects like that. And uh, and also look out for uh, for many are uh, you know real assets, real world assets projects. RWA uh, they're really interested in uh, base chain, which is the layer two chain. Uh, uh, that's, you know, it's uh, Coinbase uh, chain uh, from Ethereum. They're really interested in launch in launching uh, real world uh, use uh, coins. In, in that one blockchain, uh, that's what I've been hearing from my alpha team, and uh, and yeah, and I'm really looking forward for my Venom airdrop and jumping into a big swing trade, you know, with them if they have a, a, a correction due to the airdrop, and you know how it always goes at, at launch. Uh, I did look today at a chain that was uh, that was released. I, f- I forgot the name of it. I'm sorry. It was released uh, on five different exchanges if i'm not mistaken but uh oof, tough tough one it stayed up there so uh i didn't i didn't chase it you know but uh but yeah i'm, I'm big on venom march 18 it's gonna release and uh look out for that base uh l2 uh, chain that's out already and uh and they're gonna have some sweet uh real world assets projects uh dropping in probably soon you know uh I guess uh, they have more uh, power with the the government, and since they're part of Coinbase, I guess it's easier for these uh, projects that are companies to get in that chain and uh, and do their thing. Definitely think that swing trades are. Definitely for the experience, you know what I mean? I definitely think that's something that experienced people uh, only is what I would recommend get into swing trading just for the simple fact that it can be, uh, you know, very volatile. You can make a lot, a lot of money. It can just be very, very volatile. So just kind of like watching out in the, the crypto industry. You always got to watch for your swing trades if you're going to do it. Make sure you think that you actually have the uh, the winning combination, as they say. So it's definitely a good way to make money if you know what you're doing, though. Same thing with the derivatives market. 100%. 100%. Go ahead, Mar. Yeah, uh, what helps me on a swing trade is I jump on an asset that I want to hold it long term. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm not jumping into a swing trade and just... Uh, you know, I go in with a dollar, two dollars, I'm out. No, I'll keep that one dollar there long term. That's what uh, keeps me calm, doesn't give me anxiety. I I kind of suck at, at trading. You know, uh, I like to trade assets that I'm that I that I want to hold long term. And many of the our currencies that I hold are long term. I jump into trades with them too. I, I, it's like a family. You get to know them. You. You see how they they move. You you you're you're engaged with the community. You you know the news. If there's an exchange coming, if there's anything, any little news, you know that any small news pumps uh, crypto. Uh, and uh, but yeah, I uh, that's what I normally do my my swing trades. And if it goes a little bit south, I'm like you know what, hell with it. I'm, I'm here long term. Uh, but yeah, and and uh, and. The biggest point here is like when I when I put in that money, it's it's not my the last of it, you know. I, I still have more, you know. I just so I go in there and I, I even plan to uh, a lot of these centuries I plan to DCA and everything sometimes, you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm not a big trader that buys something and sells it a few minutes later or seconds later. Or I like to do my swing trades for a few days, even months sometimes, you know. That's the way to do it, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, day traders are, I don't know how they can sleep. I mean, it's just, well, so. High blood uh, pressure. Yeah, 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 right. I have a few day traders that are like, I don't know how, how you could sleep, going to sleep knowing that your money is out there in, in the powers of others. I'm like, you're right, and you know what, you're right, but I just can't be looking at charts all day, all day, you know. 
Swing trading is not so much about the charts, it's more reading, you know, uh, rather information about the project, the company, and feeling safe that your money is in there on a, on a swing trade, you know. But yeah, psychology, you know, at the end. Or just having an inside source. Like, what, what's the lady's name? What's the lady's name from Congress? They just came out today. Congress said that they want to ban uh, congressmen and uh, from being able to buy stocks. Nicasco's you know? best friend, Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's one hundred for one hundred. I think she's only lost one, just not to make it suspicious. <laughs> I think she's only lost on one investment, not to make it too suspicious. And then her husband both. Hundred percent. See, Mr. Burt is in the building. I see we got Kai Specter that came through. Eight's great. Cited chain eight oh eight five B O Matthew Infinity. Cited chain green. Chris and Joel and first steps. If I'm missing anybody new that came through, I all oh, Jen. I see Jen's in the house as well. And Bidos. But obviously, let's see to check out the current market real quick. Let's see what Bitcoin is doing currently. Oh, right around the same, 72890 two dollars um anybody up here anybody have any thoughts on where they see bitcoin uh through the night with the with the asian market you know waking up and, and what do you think that they're they're going to be doing tonight do you think that the asian market will be buying up bitcoin or will they be liquidating bitcoin tonight and then possibly what you what you all think Y'all could see tomorrow. What kind of moves could we see tomorrow in the market? I think we're going to see... Uh, I don't think we're going to see a major retraction at all. I mean, for a long time, we had, me and you had been talking, obviously, in private uh, about what we think is going to happen with the market um, just to try to obviously make sure that we're on a cohesive page about uh, you know what's going on. Um, I think that honestly, we're going to see consistency here. I think we're going to see a lot of, uh, a lot of things that we haven't seen before in terms of what we're going to, you know, see as far as increases. I don't think that we're going to see any major gains in the next 24 hours. I think that, uh, as high as I could see it going within the next 24 hours is 82, 83,000. Um, that's still a very large, uh, amount of money that will be moved in, um, but I think it'll take probably, if we're going to continue on this upward trend, I could see uh, something like 85 by the end of the week if it really keeps pushing. For the simple fact, 80 to 85. Um, I think 80 is obviously the, the next line of, um, you know, where we'll see uh, things change again. And I think that, you know, that's just another uh, another step up. And I think we will achieve that most likely this week or early next week. Um, I just think that there's too many, po there's so much positive sentiment right now. Uh, such a different feel to this um, start of this cycle than there was last time. And such a different, uh, you know, just atmosphere amongst everybody and how they feel about it. And there's so many, so many more experienced traders now. Uh, people that have been through a cycle, and so I think that this really does, you know, pay to fruition the, um, you know, the fact that there is a lot of people that are going to do things more uh, intelligently and do it the right way, and there's going to be less people making quote-unquote mistakes uh, and more people kind of holding for the long term is what I think, and so the kind of people that are going to be wanting to, you know, sell or would want to sell at this point if it would have naturally gotten to this uh, this high, uh, especially before the happening. I think, 
you're seeing those people hold on, especially the private investors, because they want to see really where the institutional money will take it. And I think you're going to end up seeing the same thing with Ethereum. Uh, you, once those get passed and once the ETFs are active, I think what you're going to see is the large private holders are going to continue to hold their bags because they're going to want to see how far the institutional money can really pump it up. Now, obviously, if you're, you know, in my opinion, my style of investing is to obviously take profit along the way. Um, but if you're really one of those people who's diehard set on, you know, not touching it and watching it go up, uh, that's your personal choice. And I, I think that it, you know, isn't a terrible call for the simple fact that I think that we will see massive, massive gains for both, um, you know, Big Daddy Bit still, as well as Ethereum is going to go, uh, in my opinion, places that a lot of people didn't see it going for quite a long time. And I think that's a great thing for everybody in this space. So that's my opinion on uh, what the price will be the next 24 hours. Thank you, thank you, Mar Mutasco. Anybody down in in the in the below have any thoughts? Um, I I, I have a I, I could see a nice retracement after we probably hit around 80, 82k. If, if we probably hit eighty k before the halving, and then a a nice retracement, and then right there is just a rocket to one hundred k, one hundred and twenty k. I think that 100, 120K could happen in one freaking day. I mean, that's how formal, that's how hard formal is going to hit. So I see it on the 80s. I, I know a lot of people are saying 100K before the halving. I, I, I don't know. I think the, I think 100K is going to be after the halving. That's going to be the party. You know, that's going to be the party. And uh, and that's what we're going to say. Okay, full, full bull run. We're on. How high, high. I think people were, were scared of, uh, were saying, oh, man, after 69K, it's no man's land, you know? People are going to be nervous. No, nah, man, for me, after 69K, yeah, but the psychology is not that bad. It's not that bad. The fear is not there. I think the fear is going to be more after 100K. I think that's where we are going to find out what, what Bitcoin is made out of. And I think a lot of people are going to be surprised how fast it's going to fly after 100K, you know? Um, you know, hey, there's a coin out there that I don't see anyone talking that much about it. And all the fraud that they got, and it's actually outperforming Ethereum. It almost touched all-time high today which is BNB, you know? So I'm I'm surprised how great the BNB coin has performed. They, it hit today uh, 649, all-time high was 673. Ethereum all-time high was 4,700 plus. And I'm, I'm shocked that BNB almost hit all-time high before Ethereum. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond shocked, you know, but, you know, uh, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, you know, and I, I still think Ethereum is going to outperform big time, you know, uh, uh, Binance, but I'm, I'm I'm surprised, you know, and I don't know what your take is on BNB, but with all the FUD they have and, uh, and other issues with uh, CZ and all this, I know they got, they just backed up by the strongest exchange, you know, in the world, crypto exchange, but, uh, but I'm very surprised how good our Binance, the, the BNB coin has performed, especially the last, uh, the last few weeks, you know, but yeah, that's my take on Bitcoin, I think that uh, people were talking about how scary it's going to be after 69,000, no, for me, it's more like the 100k will we're really going to no man's land. I mean, that's psychologically just seeing those six figures. People are going to be like, should I sell? Oh, my God, you know? And uh, I don't think so, man. I think it might struggle a little bit, but then it's just going to skyrocket. And I think from 100K to 120K, it's going to be like, fuck, you're going to wake up and say, holy shit, we just went up 20 grand? At least that's my take on it, you know? And uh, I could be wrong, and most of the time I am, so... 
not for any sort of ice or anything, you know? No, no, 100%. You know, uh, I definitely, like I said, I didn't get to really look at the market today, so I was generally surprised yet happy for, for BMB. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think it's going, I think it could, we know it's going to make, make some headway, uh, obviously in this, uh, this market. So definitely, definitely, definitely a hundred percent. Uh, Lutasco, how are you feeling? Probably like he's hungry, so he's going to eat. You hear me? Yeah, I think Mutasco didn't realize BNB hit six forty nine. Shock right now. Yeah, I think uh, the BNB went through a lot, so they're still getting out of the fatigue. But uh, when when you if you understand how what the cost of compliance can do to businesses and corporate um, organizations, you understand where they're headed. They're headed into some new territory. So. Um, but it's it's nice to see it come back. I mean, it's it has similar whatever, but you know how that that would 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 end. But I'm happy to see them do well. You just don't forget that you know when you put two companies or two projects that are similar in this space, and one is getting like compliance on steroid. Um, you, they're, they're smart people there. The, the, the Binance team, they're very smart. So they know they're being proactive and strategic and that's going to slow things down a little bit, but that doesn't mean that BNB doesn't have a leg up, um, from here. I did, I did want to comment on what Killswitch was saying about, I think, I don't know if Belize was talking, but I couldn't hear him. And I think that the space ragged and I came back up, but you guys were talking about, um, the the supply shock um literally we know if you're buying bitcoin at 60 or 70 right now you're literally buying it at a discount half the price that's basically if you look at it from like because they say you know um if bitcoin is a commodity the cost to mine bitcoin determines its price right so if we're going to end up with half think about that for a second so the institutions, I think I had Kill Switch was talking about it earlier. And what came to my mind immediately was, I think Michael Seeler does a, an excellent job explaining this. And, it, it, you know, it's just simple. You know, we all know gold, right? Gold, 2%, whatever, right? And, and one of the things that he says that sunk in with me was, with gold, yes, there's the, the inflation is 2%, but, if we wake up tomorrow and gold is like a million dollars, you better believe that Newmont, all these big mining companies, you're going to have, you know, people with money come together, mobilize equipment, and they're going wherever there's gold, right? Think about the, the gold reserves that have not been extracted, right? And if you look at all over the world, if they're not mined, they're not in the market. So think of it as staked eat or staked whatever, right? It's sitting there. Nobody's using it. It's not in circulation. Uh, but if you make an average inflation rate of gold, you think of, okay, that that is that is a problem because that means the price may not go up significantly. And I agree with Bill Ackerman's point about whether he was trolling or he actually meant what he's saying when he said Bitcoin could go to infinity. What that means is, and what I just said about the gold, right? I'm using that to make a point on Bitcoin. We all know if it goes half, supply is capped. So it's not like, oh, we're going to wake up tomorrow once it's halved and then the price starts to go up parabolically. You're going to have a group of people, maybe BlackRock saying, hey, we're going to go mine more Bitcoin than what is originally hard coded. Okay. So we're all about to see something for the first time. I don't know what that would mean for Bitcoin's price, but this is above my pay grade. I, I, I'm st like, uh, understand, I'm trying to understand how this is going to play out. And to your point, Kill Switch, as it, we don't know yet how the institutions, like, it's like the, the, the Vanguard story, the Bogle, is it Bogle Boys? 
uh, like we're not selling. Like there are people who are literally saying they're not selling. So if you have a significant amount of people saying they're not selling, then you have a supply shock, and then you have all these other factors. Um, who's going to sit there? If you sit there, what are you sitting there for? Do you have any alternative to dilute the price? If you don't, and this thing is like distributed all over the world, how, well, there's concentration in the U.S. or maybe Canada or China. I don't know. Like, if you start to pick up the pockets, it's still reasonably distributed around the world. So, this whole Bitcoin thing, it's there's going to be tons of case studies in in business schools, and you know, people are going to be like debating this thing uh, five, ten years from now. But I am happy to 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 see how this will play out. I'm just tr trying to understand how I can make sense of it. It does it. It's hard for me to pin down what would happen. But this is where you're like, okay, let's let's all just sit there and watch because I I can tell you, nobody knows. Nobody knows like what could potentially happen um, once the heaven goes on. Um, we all saw what just happened, right? Everybody thought this this was gonna happen. Trend this, trend that. And then it, it blew past that. Uh, so what's coming next, I don't know. But it's a good thing. I mean, we're, we're, we're better off being in this situation where <laughs> it's green than when we were looking at it like 17K or 18K. And people were like, oh, it's going to go to 12K. Some people were like 5K. Now we're way above that. So that's all a good thing, right? At the end of the day, I'm not even stressing like, yeah, Bitcoin is going to go down. or do No, no it just... Sit there, chill, and watch it. This is amazing. This will be a good case study to read and um, debate because th the magnitude of I don't like if you think of what Michael Saylor, Michael Saylor is trying to do now. Michael Saylor, Michael Stray is, is becoming a proxy. I can't tell how they're raising this debt, but. It is literally becoming a proxy, and I know sometimes these corporate debts, how they they, they, they do all kinds of web stacking it up. Um, I have another story I'll tell someday, but when I see stuff like that, that's what I think about. I'm like, oh my God, there's all kinds of players, and if you want to trace who is making this happen, it will be a deep, deep rabbit hole. So it's interesting that micro, micro strategy is just literally going all in. And at some point, I'm asking myself, okay, who is in this with him? Is it just micro, micro strategy or there's somebody else that is not is going to be try to be like some, some Satoshi? Right? Because I don't want to be out there. I don't want everybody to know I'm doing this. Um, but there's a lot of game, game theory going on here on who gets to hold how much of this thing and how they can control the market uh, into the future. They're very smart to know what's going to happen. So for me, the little guy like me, I'm just hanging out. I'm not stressed. <laughs> I'm not stressing out on anything. Um, I'd rather be in this situation than what we were in a year ago. So. Mutasco, are you sure that you're not just using ChatGPT all the time, bro? Because I think you're using ChatGPT. I think you are ChatGPT. Your information is too good. No, I'll tell you. I tried to use um, Validator AI or whatever it's called because I've, I've had my proposals written. I don't, I don't have time to do that, to be honest. It's harder, and if anybody who's tried ChatGPT, come up here and tell me if it's that easy. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to waste. <laughs> um, yeah, I just read a lot. I'm I'm crazy reader. I'm just, like, crazy, okay? Crazy. That's what I would say. Mm, um, my kids know me for that. Even my kids, okay? My wife, if you meet my wife one day, she'll tell you that. But that's all it is. I don't, I can't. There's no way. <laughs> I wish I could. If I could get a chip and put it in my head, I, I'll have more time to do other things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not, a, it's fun. I love it.
There will never be another Mutasco. No, and we're we're lucky to to have Mutasco with us here on the nightly. He he, you know, everybody, you know, everybody that comes here. Obviously, we're we're lucky to have. But when you think about it, you know, Mutasco, you you definitely come up here, and you know, you don't have to by by any means, but you come up here and share a lot of knowledge uh, with all of us. You know, and, and it's amazing to have met some met you in this space and it's been amazing over these last couple months to start developing you know a what i would consider a a friendship with you uh and i know that the future is bright for all of us i think uh i think our our positivity uh matches each other as well as the direction we're we're, you know like we're heading where we know we know where this thing's going we're not going to allow anybody or anything to to get in our way or 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 change our our mindset out of it you know but that goes for a lot of us i think a lot of us understand uh that there's something truly amazing going on uh with crypto now uh and there, you know it was just like anything uh anything that is good in life it takes time and when something takes time, it takes patience as well on, on your end. Uh, and nothing that is amazing or great really comes that easy that often or that or, or if ever. Uh, and a lot of us have been here for, for, for many years. Some of us have been here for since the beginning. You know, since 2009 when Bitcoin, the inception of Bitcoin, some of us came in 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and some of us now obviously in 24. But we've all have started our journeys. We all have our journeys that have taken us different places to different and different things, all from different times. Uh, but, you know, it's it's amazing. You know, it's literally four years later, you know, four, four, a little over four years ago, I was hearing a lot of the same things, you know, it's amazing when you can still sit there and say almost a half a decade later that, guess what, y'all, y'all are still early. <laughs> like, like we were saying that, you know, almost five years ago, a half a decade ago, it is true. You are still early. A lot of people might look at it like, well, Bitcoin's at 73000 today. Uh, and, you know, da 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 But at the end of the day, like, okay, yeah, it's at 73000 But, you know, just give yourself some time, you know. Go go read about what's happening. Go study. You know, talk to people. You know, have, have an understanding of what BlackRock and what Fidelity and what ARK and, and all these institutions are aiming for and going for i mean to me this is this them getting you know they're just dipping their toes in the water you know uh to feel everything out uh, as we know there's a lot there's a lot of of money trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars that's sitting on the sideline uh and i think that you know a good portion of it is going to to come into this this space uh I've had many conversations with people and, you know, after that, like, I'm not a, like, I'll talk about market caps and, and get my predictions and stuff. I'm not a big person like that. I don't, like, just announce it. Like, if somebody asks me, I, I'll just throw something out there that I believe. Uh, I'm not somebody that necessarily just sits there and, 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 and does it all the time. Obviously, when I'm looking at potentially getting into something, that's when I'm really, you know, looking what, I don't care about the price of the token at that moment. I'm more about, you know, What's the market cap with everything that all my research and knowledge and understanding this project? Where do I think it could potentially go? It, and then obviously liquidity to market cap ratio. If it does get there, and I and, and I obviously have my long term hold, my moon bag. If it does get there, am I going to be able to to cash it out? Um, and, and you know that's what matters. But it is truly, truly still very early for us here in crypto uh, we're, it's been 15 years and we're just starting to finally get institutions 
in here. We just got as we just got ETF approvals, uh, and let's be honest, there's there's a lot of institutions that are still sitting on the sideline that haven't even opened their ETFs, haven't even started uh, putting their money in there. As we know, like you you know, the United States, a lot of people don't even still they don't even respect respect us. You know, we we got a little bit of respect, but fully not. I mean. It, it, it's insane. So, like, there's so much, so much growth still for for cryptocurrency, you know. And, and I truly still stand on it. It's my opinion. It's my thoughts. My belief that this is the future of finance, uh, and I truly believe that. Uh, and what I've seen transpire almost over the last five years is is giving me that conviction. So, go ahead, Mutasa. Yeah, my day was packed. Um, how I still have energy doing this, you don't need any proof. Like, I love the space, so there's no question. Especially when you read stuff and you understand that this is what it is. And, and you also look at the, the other side and say, well, this has been their game for decades, right? They get in, understand things quick, and then they, they, they gatekeep the information. So if you don't get the information, then you don't you don't participate, uh, and if you don't participate, then you get even dumber, and they get to just scheme you, uh, and it's it's been a, a cycle. This is different, and this is different because a lot of people, people like me, somebody like me, can actually get to understand it. How incredible is that? And and kill switch in your space earlier, I posted this because, I mean, even. Look, look, Ethereum, it's been what, seven years, seven years. Does that blow your mind that the whole Ethereum ecosystem at one point was one billion market cap? And that wasn't like 30 years ago or 20 years ago or whatever, right? And then today as we sit here, a dog with, with a hat, okay, or Pepe. Or a billion is what? What is it? It's a thousand like, million. Yeah. Does that, like, this is what, what like, it, it beats, like, it beats common sense. Like, you're thinking about it and you're wondering, like, wow. You can go to school and learn, like, how log chats work and how, they have like exponential, whatever. It's it's all like theory, right? But this is practical. It's like you go to school, you learn how to fix up something, and then you come out and it's practically being shown to you. So this is this is why I said it will be there will be many case studies on this thing. Right now, though, because we're swimming in it, we're not seeing the reality. But that's the way that I'm looking at it, right? So it's hard for me to ignore something like that. Like how how do you ignore that? Like I don't know. You, you have people like P Peter Sch Schiff, or whatever his name is. Um, I know why he's doing that, because at one point he was telling everybody to buy gold. So, yeah, everybody went, 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 went. Now, if you have all your money locked up in something, you're trying to, to play the Wall Street game, right? Let me fud this thing and maybe get money to, to scoop it up. Whatever it is that he's doing. It's hard for me to trust people like that, because when you're, when you're not honest about your intellect, it's it's very difficult for me to believe that you're not going to be dishonest in something else. So anybody that wants to protect their credibility or integrity should look at this and, and tell it the way it is. At least they can say, well, I don't understand it enough, but I think it makes sense from this, 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 this. Some of these people don't even say that. They just flat out ignore it. And they say, well, it's you know, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. Uh, you know, at one point, you're going to have more than 21 million uh, Bitcoins, and they just walk away with it. And they're like, yeah, I just said it, and I don't care. Um, and that's what, what gets me sometimes. Because then, like, when I hear stuff like that, it pushes me to want to do even further. And I'm like, what, what am I missing? Am I missing something? Do I need to, like, like see somebody that can explain this better for me? <laughs> so... Um, it's amazing that we're, we're hanging out in this and I, I can't imagine what that would be 
a year from now, maybe by the end. So the people that estimated the entire cryptocurrency market cap hitting 10 trillion, at this point, I don't see why it won't be possible. And if it is, the highest dominant asset, which is maybe Bitcoin, if something flips it, I don't know. Would it go beyond 10 trillion? I don't know. But at this point, there's no other way to look at it, right? Even if we cracking 7 trillion is not going to be shocking to me. Um, but we'll all wait and see whether that will, that will be a reality, right? But you can't connect the dots looking forward, like J Steve Jobs says. You, you would connect them looking backwards. So what am I looking at? I'm looking at where we started, even in 2017. I'm like, oh, where are we now? If you do the numbers... You say, okay, a year, two years from now, we're in a bull market. What's going to happen, right? Just leave it and then watch it. That's where I'm at. Thank you, Mutasco. I see that we got our brother Cleric up here. How are you doing, Cleric? Not too bad, man. Hyped about what I, what I saw with Bitcoin today. So I know Mutasco was talking about it. I actually wanted yeah, to put so a friendly bet out there. So, um, my, if you want to know uh, what kind of sparked all the conversation, my question was, with what Bitcoin's been doing, and obviously the recent, everything, you know, the market, the institutions, where do you kind of see, you know, what do you, what is the, what do you kind of see the, for the rest of the week when it comes to the overall market, Bitcoin, Ethereum, alt memes, like where do you kind of see it moving and, and what is your kind um, of input? We have a chance of crab walking. There's a small chance of doing it. I don't think we're going to see a big retrace. I think we're going to see further push and here is why. There's, I saw something online today, there was only... What is it? There's a grand total of Bitcoin of 21 billion, correct? Or is it million? I can't remember. No, it's. It, I want to say it's billion. There's only 10 million left in circulation because BlackRock has pretty much absorbed a good, I'd say, 30% of the supply at this point. Um. People do not realize supply shock is inbound much sooner than we expect. And $7 trillion in funds coming into crypto, that's a joke. I'm predicting 24 plus coming in. And I would predict probably mid-next year is when we hit that. Uh, and we are going to see mass adoption very quickly because, I mean guys who actually own companies i know three of them uh they were advised to sell when it hit like 16 grand from their traditional advisors and uh i got text messages in the past week telling me we should have listened to you man uh, we don't know what to do at this point and i just told them look supply shock's coming it's going to continue to climb uh here between now and next year and I'm I'm predicting bare minimum, bare minimum, 125 grand Bitcoin, bare minimum. At high end, just like Kathy Woods is saying, it's entirely possible to see a million dollar Bitcoin. It is entirely possible. And the math cracks out too. So as far as altcoins go, they haven't had their season yet. We will see that happen as to when. But it could be in the next... 45, 70 days would be my guess. And when those suckers run, <laughs> there's some that some of these projects I'm looking into, they're like three zeros and a three. Other uh, projects are, you know, four or five zeros and a one or something. And there's a few projects that we're going to see go absolutely bonkers. And that's just the cycle. People ride the wave of Bitcoin, they take their money, and then they turn around and throw it into altcoins, knowing they can double, triple, 10x the, that money at the right time, and they follow the, the big money, and yeah, it's just a cycle. So I'm excited for the remainder of this year, especially come, what, the next month, 
right before having. I'm expecting just things to gasoline on a fire. And that's when the fun begins. So that's my prediction. Um, I also would like to add to that. If you do digging and factually dig, BlackRock does not absorb things like this in this quantity just to play around. My prediction is next five to ten years, we're not going to have your traditional stock market. We will have a global stock market on chain. It will combine everything and we will see Bitcoin end up acting like the Dow of the stock market. I would not be surprised to see Bitcoin backed by gold at some point, returning to the gold standard. I, I really would not be surprised to see that. But that's big picture for me. Uh, that's my, I makes sense to me to see that happen. Um, but, you know, I could be smoking hopium too. People would call me crazy on that one too. So that's me. <laughs>